Welcome, Epic Adventure Seekers, to Let's Get Metaphysical, Connecting Heart and Mind. I'm Allie Bierman, and today we're going to present a wisdom share, and it's all about mainstream medicine versus energy healing. Sometimes when you're not feeling well, you forget what you know. And the way I wasn't feeling well was I had really severe dizziness, like room spinning dizziness. And it didn't just manifest as dizziness in my getting along and functioning in the world, but it also impacted my thinking. I couldn't think clearly at all. So for me, not thinking clearly is calling a mainstream doctor. So I thought that the dizziness was similar to something called BVP, which I had had some years ago. And I was pretty sure it felt like that. So I went to see an ENT. And unfortunately, as wonderful as she was, she misinterpreted what she was seeing and actually caused me to get like really, really scared. And when you're already dizzy and you're not thinking clearly and you get really scared, everything that you know and everything you live, well, I was speaking for me, goes out the window. So there I was not thinking clearly, not making any sense of anything and following what she was telling me. And she missed something really, really important that way, way, way increased my level of fear. So it's important to always trust yourself, to know yourself. And that's a bit of a challenge when you're not thinking clearly and when you are in fact Dizzy. So here's the thing you want to know. Always, 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 did I say that enough times? Always trust your instinct. And if something doesn't feel right, that's because it's not right for you. Because your instinct is your spirit that protects you, that keeps you safe. But here's the other piece that I was missing because of not thinking clearly and of somebody missing some key information who says some things that really, really, really scared me. And it wasn't meant for anything except it was something she didn't know. So no one's infallible and people make mistakes. And my mistake was I was feeling so bad, I was trusting what I was being told instead of testing. I don't do anything without testing to see that a procedure or a supplement or a food or a test or anything is in my highest and best interest and will benefit me and keep me safe. Because if it's not in your highest, best interest, if it's not going to benefit you, you may as well be putting poison in your system because that's what it comes down to. So first I was following all that and I got scared. And something that happened that she said, gee, your blood pressure is really high, which was a total surprise to me because I used to monitor my blood pressure. My blood pressure had been low and normal and super healthy, except I had stopped monitoring it two months before because it had been, well, perfect for all those months. So the other thing that she did was she misinterpreted what she saw because she didn't know how to fix it and was afraid that I had a nodule on my vocal cord. Okay, that's not a good thing to have. 
so these two elements scared me. And she was somebody with an incredible bedside manner. And I really, really, really liked her. I really trusted her. I couldn't think clearly because I was too dizzy. And she actually called to check up to make sure I was going to the ER to be sure that I'd be safe with my blood pressure where it was. So... In the meantime, I started to panic because doctors tell you, well, this number is not a safe place to be. Okay, except other cardiologists tell you something different. But I couldn't think clearly because I was too dizzy. And there I was, and I was in the emergency room, and Man, it was a busy, busy day. It was six and a half hours in a waiting room before I got to go back to be seen. And then because my blood pressure was elevated, they did every test they could think of, which meant CAT scan and x-ray and making sure my brain looked healthy so there wasn't like any blood clot possibility. And because of how I felt at the time, of course, I trusted them. Now, here's another really interesting thing that happened was I wasn't just sitting there worried for six and a half hours. I was meditating. And actually, what I was doing was I was going into who I really am. I'm not my body. You're not your body either. I'm not my mind. You're not your mind either. I knew I was awareness and I was aware of what was going on in my body and knew don't listen to your mind because your mind's just going to say a bunch of stuff that's going to not really be truth. Anyway, all it can do is say what it believes. And if you listen to your mind, well, you're going to hear a lot of beliefs that you've been telling yourself for so many years. You actually think it's fact. It's not. <laughs> okay. It's not fact. So, so I wasn't doing that. And I was just telling myself that I'm aware and it kept me calm for those six and a half hours. And then when I got to go back, they took all those tests, but the ER was packed. So they also it took a really long time before somebody came to see me uh, with the results of all the tests. And they came and they said, and the doctor said, man, you're in really good shape. Everything's normal. Everything's healthy. Everything's strong. So they weren't in a hurry to... They definitely didn't want to give me a medication through an IV. They weren't worried about that. And what they were looking at was just letting me be quiet. Now, I didn't know I was going to be there six and a half hours before I got seen. I hadn't eaten yet. I, hadn't, I don't usually go any place without my water. I had my water with me. So you might imagine I was majorly dehydrated. Well, if you're dehydrated, all kinds of things aren't going to feel good, and it sure isn't going to support closing out the dizziness episode. So I just continued to do my I'm awareness, I'm not my body, I'm not my mind. I am awareness observing this experience. And it's what kept me calm. And it also lowered my blood pressure. So my blood pressure dropped and dropped and dropped until it wasn't in a dangerous place. Okay, so after I don't know how many hours it was, and my blood pressure had come down, then they came in with an IV. Now, this is really interesting. It was an IV of saline solution. What do they tell you? when you have high blood pressure to avoid salt. But they're talking about sodium chloride, which is the kind of salt they put in their saline solution. 
What do you think happened? Man, my blood pressure ran up even higher than it was when I went in there in the first place. You got to trust yourself, but you need to be able to comprehend yourself and what's going on in your body. Because here's the thing. When you pay attention to you, you have better information than anyone out there. And the fact is you and you alone heal yourself. You alone are responsible for your healing. You say, oh no, a doctor will tell you, well, here's a bright example. I read a lot of studies, the actual studies, because you have, you know, don't believe anything you read on the internet, but if you're going and you're getting the information of the actual studies and the the results and the, I forgot what you call the little synopsis beforehand and everything, you know, you're getting at least something accurate because you got to be careful of the source of studies. So, and that's something I could detail another time, but not here, not right now. So I know that Himalayan salt with minerals, your body needs those minerals to be able to utilize water. Otherwise, you won't be able to assimilate it. But you never, ever go to regular sodium chloride, also called white salt. And a quick aside, sea salt, it's been warned even by the FDA, I saw the warning. Sea salt has so much plastic in it. It's a good thing to avoid. So there I was. <laughs> and my blood pressure had gone up high. But they weren't worried. They saw that everything looked good. So eight and a half hours after going in there, I went home. Problem was I was still dizzy. Some doctors were saying dizziness comes from high blood pressure. And other doctors said, that's ridiculous. Dizziness has nothing to do with high blood pressure. So I still didn't understand why I had the blood, high blood pressure. However, because I was scared, because I wasn't thinking clearly, I said yes when they gave me blood pressure medication. I've never in my life taken blood pressure medication, okay? Because I know how to get my blood pressure down naturally. And I usually do. And it's usually like where it is today in a super, super, super healthy place. So anyway, I took the blood pressure medication. I mean, it's a good thing I only live five minutes away because when I got home, not only was the world spinning, but it wiped me out, okay? I've always been sensitive to medication, also sensitive to supplements. I don't take anything in my mouth. I can use patches that go without interfering with anything directly into your system. But any kind of medication by mouth, man, I couldn't, I was grateful I made it home. I got into my bed and I just lay there because I couldn't even sit up. That's how the dumb medication wiped me out. So uh, how many days later, it, my blood pressure was still higher than what they told me it should be. So I actually kept taking the medication, feeling crummy. Okay, I wasn't listening to myself because I was still dizzy. You got to listen to yourself and do what you know is best for you. Here's where I lost it because I was scared. Do you know the number three cause of death is doctor prescribed medication. It's allergic reactions. So this wasn't an allergic reaction. However, some days later, when my blood pressure went up high again, and it went back to the ER, they gave me a second medication to add to the first. Like, 
oh, Lord, that's all I need. My body's not used to and doesn't do that. And that second medication, I had a very severe, very dangerous reaction to it. And thankfully, I knew to do what I always do when I tested both medications and my spirit said, no way, don't take either of those. And it took a couple of days for the stuff to clear out. And then I started feeling better. So in terms of what healing works, if you believe something's going to assist your healing, it's going to work. And if you don't believe it, it's not going to work because you heal you it's not someone or something outside of you that heals you case in point a study done on people who had pneumonia and penicillin was prescribed because that's the thing about mainstream medicine they'll say this works Okay, so in the study that was done on penicillin for people with pneumonia, 65% of the people in the study believed it would work. And guess what? 65% of them got better on the penicillin. However, the other 35% did not, did not believe the penicillin would cure their pneumonia. They did not get better. So the thing to do is always test yourself. And I can, if you contact me, I can give you the method for doing that. It's on my website. Actually, it's on my website, yourrelationshipintelligence.com forward slash supplements and there's the whole how to do that okay so here's the next place to go in mainstream medicine a hundred people can come in with the same symptoms like for me i came in with high blood pressure what do they do everybody gets blood pressure medication the thing is, a hundred people have a hundred different causes causing the high blood pressure. That medication isn't the solution for all 100 of them. It may be for some, but chances are it's not for most of that hundred. And you need to know what's the cause. So when something's going wacko in my health, I ask the universe, what do you want me to be aware of that I'm not paying attention to? Now, when I was severely busy, I wasn't asking myself that. And that's why I kept being dizzy. So then when I realized, okay, I know it's wrong. I'm too dizzy to get there. But I know darn well these symptoms, my atlas is out of alignment. Here's the thing that'll knock you off your seat. You tell a mainstream doctor that your atlas is out and they look at you with a blank look because they don't even know what your atlas is. Your atlas is the ring. It's not really your C1. It's not really your top vertical, cervical vertebrae. It's not that the atlas is actually the ring that your head, your skull sits on. And it's really easy for it to go out of alignment. And when it goes out of alignment, you know what has to happen? Your spine has to go all wacky to balance your head, to keep your head on straight. Because when your atlas is out, it means the messages from your brain going through into your spinal cord, they're not getting there accurately. So as soon as the universe allowed me to calm the dizziness, I made an appointment to see 
an atlas orthogonal doctor. You can't go to somebody who's not a specialist in the atlas. And it needs, needs to be an atlas orthogonist or an orthospinologist. And they need to know what they're doing because, man, having your atlas out and not properly adjusted can just completely destroy your health. So as soon as I trusted the universe to get me safely to the atlas orthogonist, I went, man, my atlas was majorly out of place. And, we, and it's so simple. You don't even feel it. It doesn't hurt. It takes an instant to adjust it because the person knows what they're doing. No more dizziness. No more high blood pressure. So you got to know what's important and in, in how your body functions. And if you send me a message, I'll send you the links of how to find an atlas orthogonist because I've never, ever seen anybody whose atlas was not out of alignment because it's so easy for it to go out of alignment. So those are some starter points. Now, here's the next place to look at. Are you someone who's more comfortable with energy medicine? Or are you somebody who's more comfortable with mainstream medicine, with medications, with procedures? Because here's the thing. If maybe you've heard of chakras, their energy centers, they go through your midline. There are actually 20 of them, but there are seven that we're dealing with when we're talking about how are they functioning for you. So if you live in your bottom three chakras, so one is your relationship with your family of origin, two is your relationship with yourself. Very few people have a clue who they are. Chakra three is your relationship with other people. If those things are out, if they're not spinning in the proper direction, you're going to respond to regular medicine. It's going to work for you. And you're going to believe that that's something that works for you. And you're going to think energy medicine is a lot of hooey. And that's because for you, it is. Because you don't have your upper chakras. So the fourth one is your heart, which connects the lower physical body chakras to the upper spiritual chakras, which is uh, your speech and with your third eye and your relationship to a higher power. And if you're somebody like me who lives up in the spiritual chakras, mainstream medicine doesn't work for me. Energy medicine does. Energy medicine is what I need and what I use to heal and the thing about energy medicine is it's pretty instant. So thank goodness I have a friend who's a doctor and a shaman and a, just everything you could want to know in energy medicine. And she pointed out to me, oh, of course, those things don't work. You need energy medicine to heal. And of course, I was feeling better after my atlas was adjusted. And I went back and I did everything I know. And man, my blood pressure just went right down. I didn't need any medicine. I didn't need something hurting me. And what I did was what I used to do. So if you get scared, and in the case with me, I wasn't just scared. I was dizzy and wasn't thinking clearly. So I wasn't doing everything I knew to do. The last time I had high blood pressure, which was years ago. And I did not take medicine then either. I did what I know to do, which is basically energy work. So 
do what works for you do what feels good for you and pay attention to what is happening for you does anybody have any questions at this point or any experiences you want to share Okay. Well, this is my first time being back live and talking to you because I was also keenly aware when I was going through all that stuff that being on devices was sucking my energy. <laughs> Pay attention to how you feel and no one outside of you can ever tell you how you feel and what's going to work for you. I thank you so much for being here with me today, for joining me today. And I'm going to remind you to enjoy, that's capital I-N-J-O-Y, every moment. And what you look for, you'll find, and you will see the joy in each moment when you look for it, because it's always there. And you only and always see what you look for. And if you're looking for a problem, guess what you're going to find instead of that loving energy. And because who you really are is awareness. It all happens within. <laughs>